Hey everybody, Michael Snyder here, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is January 20th, coming up on 10.30 a.m. here. Taking a look at the visible satellite imagery here for the Pacific Northwest. You can see the frontal system that went through this morning. Brought some gusty winds to the area. Woke me up a little bit this morning, gusting 31 miles per hour here at my house. You can see that frontal system moving into eastern Washington now. And there's a convergent zone already starting to set up there behind it over the Puget Sound. You can see this Arctic air mass that's moved all the way down across the eastern portions of the U.S. all the way down into Texas. We'll take a look a bit at that. And then we're going to look at some of what's going on through the Pacific Northwest. Lots going on in eastern Washington, Idaho, and Montana, including eastern Oregon. And we'll take a look at that convergence zone in a little bit of detail. And then we're going to take a closer look at the extended coming up here. Some signs for some cold air getting into the region here later in January into February. And we'll take a more detailed look at that coming up. So getting right to it here. Here's the GO-16 visible satellite imagery. You can see this these clouds just coming off the Great Lakes here. That's lake effect snow. This is just cold air moving across these relatively warm lakes and causing these snow bands here. You can see quite extensive cloud coverage off these lakes. And there's a few uh, winter weather advisories due to those snow bands. You can see you've got some warnings all the way down into southern Texas here and all the way out to the Carolinas. We'll look at that just in a bit of brief detail here. And we've got some winter weather advisories out for portions of Washington, Oregon, Idaho, and Montana there. There's a flood watch or a flood warning going on here through the central Puget Sound we'll look at quickly too. So here's a national look at things. You can see that we still got the bitter cold air there through the northern states all the way down through Iowa, Wisconsin, Minnesota. Wind chill advisories going on over there. And we've got high wind warning there for central Montana and some blowing snow along with that, some blizzard conditions at times possible. So taking a look at the national radar, you can see that frontal system. It's starting to swing through eastern Washington now into Idaho and western Montana. You can see that convergence zone setting up over the Puget Sound as we speak. Some precip getting down into the Cascades of Oregon as well. Looking down into Southern California, some Santa Ana winds coming down there. And this is expected mainly a Friday night into Saturday, potentially damaging winds. If you've ever been down there for the Santa Anas, they're a very dry offshore wind that is coming off the higher terrain and compresses and gets really warm and dry. The uh, relative humidity can drop to below 5%. It gets a pretty amazing phenomena that goes on down there. And what exactly causes that? Let's back up here a little bit on this. You can see this high pressure kind of moved down over the Great Basin here. Notice this high here and these tight gradients there near the Sierras and this relatively low uh, pressure here off the coast. And that air just flows over the higher terrain down into Southern California and brings those Santa Ana winds. So that's what's going on down there. And Las Vegas also has wind advisory up. Check that out, north wind, 50 miles per hour possible, blowing dust, strong crosswinds, blowing debris. So if you're planning a trip down to Las Vegas, have a heads up on that one. Check this out, all the way down into Southern Texas, winter storm warning, winter weather advisory is also, ice accumulations possible, all kinds of stuff going on down there, all the way out to the Gulf Coast there too. Freezing rain possible. Then they've got a gale warning and a freeze warning all the way out to the coastline there. So interesting stuff going on so far this winter. Nice Arctic air mass taking up residence over most of the eastern portions of the U.S. Check out some of these wind chill readings out here in North Dakota. Actually, these aren't even wind chill readings right here. These are actually low temperatures. Willow City, negative 40. Pretty amazing. Look at Minot, negative 24. So taking a look at here, this is a temperature anomaly at the surface. If we go forward here, look at that really cold air, very unusually cold air all the way out to the Gulf Coast there. And this Arctic high is just pushed all the way down towards the East Coast go into the future a little bit here and you'll see another little bit of shot of cold air coming down towards the Great Lakes. This is on into Sunday morning and that pushes out over the northeast eventually here. And we'll take a look at our extended here in the Pacific Northwest coming up. This is at 5,000 feet here. You see that cold air just pushing off towards the east coast and that next lobe of cold air swinging out off the northeast there. And you can see how we remain warm. Look at this ridge of high pressure just building out over us. This is the ridge we have to go through before we have any chance of a change in our pattern here late into January, early February. 
We'll take a look at that one coming up. But here's what happened this morning. Here's the frontal system moving through. And you can see that was depicted pretty well here on the NAM 3 km as the system moves into eastern Washington, residual snowfall going on over the Cascades. Then you see the convergence zone set up here. And this is going to bring some um, pretty good snowfall amounts between Stevens and Snoqualmie Pass this afternoon and potentially a lightning strike somewhere through the central Puget Sound here. Look at this convergence zone. It's still going right over downtown towards Boeing Field right now. And you can see these westerly winds starting to go into eastern Washington here. Gusts over 50 miles per hour possible with some of that activity through the gaps. And you'll see how that convergence zone just kind of hangs out over the central Cascades. We'll look at some of those snow totals coming up here in a second too. And here is the wind. Here's that convergence zone signature. You see the winds coming down the strait here and wrapping around the Olympics from the south side and the relative lull over the convergence zone of the Puget Sound as that moves through. Look at some of these high winds coming through the gorge, coming through the passes there in the Cascades into eastern Washington. So heads up there if you're traveling eastbound on I-90 or if you're traveling through the gorge, I-84 today. Look at some of these winds out here on the east slopes of the Rockies through Montana there. I guess they're calling for gusts up to 70 miles per hour out there with blowing snow. And with that convergent zone, you'll see there is a classic signature here. You can see we've got Cape going on here and it doesn't take much Cape to get a lightning strike in the convergent zone somewhere. Um, I don't know if there'll be any small hail. It's always possible with a thunderstorm, but the big story of this is the snow it's going to drop in the Cascades, mainly Stevens Pass towards Snoqualmie Pass, and the outside chance of a lightning strike through the Central Sound are the big uh, stories there for the Convergent Zone today. Here's some snowfall totals coming up with this event. You can see most of it is combined to the higher terrain, and the danger with a lot of this front mainly is valleys, mainly northeast Washington, Pendleton area, the, the valleys where cold air is trapped could get some freezing rain. Looks like that threat is being reduced a bit through central Washington, but if you, you know, if you see ice accumulation, that's what it is. You've got cold air trapped in your region. It's hard to pinpoint exactly where this is going to happen, but that's usually a sheltered valley, and this can happen all the way through Idaho into western Montana as well. And you can see these snowfall totals building up especially near Stevens Pass here, like upwards of six inches in some cases. Snoqualmie Pass more towards the four inch mark. Here is that flood watch we have going on here. We had some pretty good rainfall with that system that came through last night, heading on into this morning. And you can see it's just a, a standard excess runoff may result in flooding the rivers, creek, streams, or other low-lying flood prone areas. And this is mainly for West Central Washington, King County, and this is for the Tolt and Snoqualmie Rivers. And here is Inland Spokane, talking about Mountain Pass Snow, Stevens, 4 to 6, Lookout Pass I-90, 1 to 4 inches, so heads up if you're traveling eastbound on I-90 today and tonight. You can see some of these high winds along the east slopes of the Cascades, Wenatchee, just Ellensburg. Some of these are, you know, including I-90 there, so heads up for that. Spokane area forecast discussion talking about localized gusting winds 40 to 50 miles per hour late this afternoon and evening. Usual windy spots like Mission Ridge and Entiat. And here they're talking about the burst of moderate to heavy snow be possible at Stevens Pass this afternoon with the Puget Sound Convergence Zone. Snowfall rates up to an inch per hour. And if, like we saw, six plus inches possible through tonight. Here we are going over into Pendleton, too. That's what we talked about, the light freezing rain into the sheltered valleys, snow in the higher elevations. So heads up, if you guys see any ice accumulations, you know, let me know on Twitter or let your National Weather Service office, your local office, know about that. Medford, Oregon, not much going on here. And we'll see how that ridge affects your guys' air quality down there and dense fog possibility which is going to extend into the Willamette Valley and Puget Sound areas and on in eastern Washington as we go into later next week. Here's that high wind warning out for Great Falls, Montana. Check out some of these wind speeds, 60, 70 miles per hour, cut bank, St. Mary. Pretty intense winds coming through there. So high wind warning till 10 p.m. tonight. And watch out for that blowing snow. Here's Missoula, Montana, just talking about light freezing rain in the valleys, like we mentioned, and higher elevation snowfall. 
<clears throat> Check this out for Portland. 2021 notable records. Had the warmest June ever. Had the year with the most days with high temperature of 80 plus ever. And of course, we know about the ice snow of mid-February, the heat wave of late June, another heat wave in mid-August, the warmest summer on record, heavy rain mid-October, then snow late December. So a nice active weather year for Portland. And now let's look into the extended here. Here is the ridge coming up. So you can see we're kind of going through this trough here, this last system moving through here today and tonight. And as that moves off, you see the ridge just build up over us here and the resultant troughing off to the east. And as we put that into motion here, you see the ridge is pretty persistent. Here we are into the 25th. Still ridging. Then you notice it flattens out a bit here. This is uh, the 28th. Looks like a system's probably going to move through on the 28th or the 29th, bringing some rainfall to the Pacific Northwest. We'll be able to look at the details on that system as it gets closer. And then look at this. On into late January, notice we start to get the troughing here. So this opens the door for some potential cooler weather to move into the region here. Uh, details are still unclear, but the, the pattern is still showing a shift here, as you can see, towards late January into February. And as we go on here, this is temperature at 18,000 feet. So this is currently, actually, this is not current. Let's back up. This is the system moving through now. So this cold air is kind of associated with this upper level little reflection of the polar vortex as it moves through. And then you notice this cold air just kind of get cut off. These cutoff lows are kind of fascinating. Look at this cold air get cut off and just kind of hang out down there just like it's lost. The jet stream has left it behind. And then it eventually gets reabsorbed by this next lobe of cold air there in the jet stream. So looking ahead into the future here, you notice that ridge is still plaguing us, but then it looks like a system's going to come through on the 28th, as you can see there. So that'll break things up. Maybe give us a little bit of wind. We'll see exactly how that system is going to look as it gets closer. Then another system on the heels of that on the 29th, a little bit of a northwest flow going on there. And as we go into the future a bit here, notice the colder air is starting to get closer here. And then we get this more of a trophy favorable position, especially for mountain snowfall here into early February. And depending on how this pattern plays out, that could you know bring some interesting weather down lower into the lowlands for western areas of Washington, Oregon, and British Columbia. And let's see how far this goes out there. That's about it. So this one goes way out here. This is 5,000 foot temperatures here. And this is now, you can see the ridge building up over us after the system passes through tonight. And looking onto to the future there, look at that ridge, just persistent, keeps that cold air at bay away from us. And then there comes the system possibly on the 28th moving through and another one on its heels. But check this out getting into the 31st, you start getting a more favorable pattern here for bringing some Arctic air offshore and back into Western Washington and Oregon. And that's much more favorable for uh, snowfall potential in the lowland, definitely the mountains without, it goes without saying. And then you can see off into the future even more, you can see that cold air is getting close to us out there, but then a big system comes out here, almost like an atmospheric river type deal going on here into the future. So that this ridge will last for, you know, a few days and then we're going to get back into an active pattern probably as you can see there with some bigger systems developing out in the Gulf of Alaska there into mid February according to the CFS here. But this is getting way out into fantasy land here. So hope you guys enjoyed that little front tonight cleared out the air a little bit in the western portions of western Washington and Oregon. And this can be our last precipitation for a while, probably until January 28th. So be aware of that. And hopefully we'll get a return back to the, the more normal pattern. And hopefully the fog won't set in too bad with the dense fog. Hopefully won't, uh, you know, get entrenched into the Puget Santa Willamette Valley. So I will do another briefing tomorrow. We'll take a look at that ridge and another look at the extended and try to figure out what exactly is going to go on to the extended. We'll take a look at the European model tomorrow in more detail. So Hope you guys are having a good day and I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks.